I don't get to see a lot of PUR bumpers in these days. Um, so when one comes in and this typically on a Mercedes of this age is what you're gonna see, I get super excited. So we're gonna weld up this PUR bumper using an airless welding technique. Polyurethane plastic is a thermoset plastic. That means it cannot be remolded. It cannot be uh, heated up and welded like you would a normal plastic like polypropylene, PP or ABS. So you can't use staples. They will just fizzle and fall out. The plastic doesn't actually fit around them. Uh, this is a really good hot stapler gun, by the way. This is from Magic Stapler. It's a rechargeable unit like that. We'll talk about that a bit more in the future. Uh, you can't use hot air because it won't work with that either. So what you have to do, actually on this system there is one, is this is the Polyvance um, 8203, not nitrofuser. So there is a, a airless welder attachment to it. So that is what you have to do. But if you can't afford one of those larger machines, you can buy this really smart little system, which is the Polyvance Mini Weld Airless System number seven. Weld a variety of plastics, it gives you there, so it makes it really easy, PUI, ABS, etc. And it works by feeding this rod, polyurethane rod, hold on a minute, polyurethane, PUR, through that section, and then it comes out. So now I'm gonna show you the best way to weld this up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna groove out this crack that's here, just using my Dremel, and then we're gonna put the new polyurethane in its place. And it will almost glue those two sections together. You can see someone who doesn't know how to weld plastic has tried to pre previously repair this. They look, the black is, looks to me like a two pack glue cold welding system that they've tried to use there. It won't hold it together. And they've also used a load of filler to skim over it to try and hold it again together. So we need to get rid of all of that. There's a crack up here that needs to be addressed. And then all of this crack. The polyurethane itself is this yellow color you can see behind here. That is the polyurethane plastic. Everything else shouldn't be there. Okay, so what I've done is I removed all of the previous repairers filler and um, cold welding two pack glue that they must have used. I'm gonna sand this area now with some P80 or P60. I'm not quite sure, I haven't quite made my mind up, but either of those will be fine just to widen this up. But you can see I've also grooved out all the way along the crack. And that is because when I weld the ribbon in, have a minute. When I weld this ribbon in, what I'm actually doing is just melting it in there. So it, it's acting like a hot glue going and con, um, bonding the two sides together. It will not, as in a conventional weld with polypropylene or ABS, it will not actually fuse the existing panel. You cannot reheat this and re-weld this. It just fizzles away. So we're just gonna be using this all the way along there, this new rod and fill that in let it cool down, then we can sand it. Something to let you all know about this um, machine. So if you're using the 82, you know, the, the nitrogen generating polyvance machine, when you go and switch it on, it automatically sets the temperature at 100 degrees. Well, not 100 degrees, that's maximum, 100 is the maximum. 
um, it's not actually in temperature. So what you need to do when you're welding PUR, I would say turn it down to about sort of 60. That's better. Obviously on the airless welder system itself, you don't need to worry about that because as I showed you earlier, it's got a preset setting for it. So, and it's the first one on there, which means it's gonna be a cooler temperature. So a little bit of a tip for you on those. Right, I've welded in the new PUR. It's covered it really nicely. You can see it's quite proud of the actual crack, but all we're gonna do now is sand this back with some P80, then go down to 120, uh, and then finish it off ready for a skim. I'm just gonna put a little bit of guide coat on it, just so we can see where we're sanding, take any sort of guesswork out. Using this powder guide coat is quite a good idea because it just it keeps it nice and small if you're aerosoling it up the mask up. So there you go. Got it easy to hand if we need any more. So the new weld is quite hard, but you can see I am knocking it down. Probably could have gone with a P60 to start with but I've only got P80 with the extraction system. Let's continue standing. Something note, and this is actually a good tip for you guys is, or lesson, is you can see here, that there was a, a long section there where I was just standing in the time-lapse, where the new polyurethane rod has not adhered to the paintwork. It never will, it never will. But I know I overlapped onto the paintwork a bit. It's not an issue because this is just excess anyway. The bulk of the repair is here and that's where the strength is. So we're gonna just continue sanding this back till we've got polyurethane onto polyurethane. This is why it's an good idea to use a guide coat because you can see some sections look like if you didn't have the guide coat it'll look like you've got it nice and even uh, and flush although you can feel it but with the guide coat you can see where you've still got those low spots or high spots so using a guide coat is a really good helpful piece of kit So depending on how much time you've got is whether you want to go back with a, another little weld of polyurethane, just a slight skim used in the product, just to flush this, um, smooth this all off. Because here are some areas where I actually went a little bit too deep with the die grinder and didn't put any polyurethane on that. And so that's why that's a low spot. Um, and just a couple around here, but I mean, these ones are actually will sand out and, and become smooth. So it's totally up to you, or you could just give it a little skim with a good plastic filler uh, and finish that off. It's not difficult to weld polyurethane or to fix polyurethane. You just need a little bit of know-how and the right piece of kit. So I've decided to just put another little light skim of the polyurethane on there. Uh, something else to note is you can't, once this polyurethane, after this polyurethane is cured and you've heated it on, you can't reheat it. It's a one-time hit only. So don't think you can go back with your hot iron and try and smooth it out, it won't work. So for the initial sanding, I didn't have a backing pad on my sander. I'm now gonna use a backing pad Let's just marry the holes up. And the reason for that is that's gonna help to take the shape, if I move you around, the contour of that edge. So I'm gonna go with some uh, P120 now and sand this up.
Really pleased that I went back in with uh, another little bit of a plastic weld, just to get that low spot there and a couple of the other ones. Um, Just using a little bit of uh, Colad UV putty, it's going for the coarse, the coarse putty. This stuff is brilliant for this kind of work, so quick. I'm actually gonna cure it with the heads and IRT. Um, just a little bit easier, it's close to hand today but you can use any lamp to cure this. Obviously the more powerful the lamp, the quicker it cures, but you're looking normally at around a three second cure. It probably takes me, well it does, as we can see, it takes me longer to put it on than it'll take me to cure it, which is crazy. Right, not the best, uh, best application of UV putty there, or any kind of putty, but let's give it a, Let's give it a quick cure. That's it. Uh, don't forget, now we just all we need to do is apply a little bit of guide coat and sand it back now with some 220, I would say. 180, 220 will be fine. So 220, again on the soft block, just so we can keep the contour. If you want to take this prep section one step further, um, I use, I finish it off with a little bit of fine putty, again from Colad. Uh, and I'm gonna put it on one of their soft application blocks or spreaders. The reason I like to use this product is it actually, if there's any pinholes, anything like that, it's pinholes, it's brilliant little pinholes, chips, it's it's great for that. So it's just a little final, final skim. Just to make sure I've got it exactly how I want it before I come to prime it. Okay. I'm quite new to these uh, spreaders. I wish I'd had them earlier because there are some bits where you just need that extra flexibility from your spreader. Um, and these are just brilliant for that. Okay, again, three second cure. Just give it a go. I might've done slightly longer than three seconds. So now look, a, a quick tip here is I'm actually changing my guide coat. I'm moving to an orange one because we'd used some black earlier. So we, you're gonna find it hard to find your high and low spots if I use black again. But by using orange, just changing that shade, it allows you to see any spots that you may have missed and not get them confused with the black. So you can see here, my high and low spots where I need to make it all even. We don't want to see any orange left at all now. All I've done there is just take my 220 with the soft pad off the sander just to smooth that edge off because we 
it is actually quite a smooth edge, so we don't want to have a, a hard edge here on this swage line. Now, all that's left to do is to mask up and prime. <laughs> 